Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we're delighted to, uh, that you can be here with us, and we hope that you'll find this an interesting and uh, informative session. And what we're going to consider is the increasingly important subject as we try to respond to uh, the transition to net zero, namely the nature and role of smart local energy systems. Uh, my name is Eric Brown. I'm CTO at the Energy Systems Catapult, and I'm also uh, director of the, uh, the ARIS program. Um, we're, we're, we're pleased to have this opportunity to do three things this afternoon. Uh, first of all, we're going to uh, launch a paper which we've uh, recently prepared on the uh, uh, concept design projects that we're undertaking in the Prospering from the Energy Revolution program. Uh, secondly, uh, we're going to share some thoughts uh, from the work that the Catapult has done, which supports and seeks to build on the work that was done in the uh, in the context of the uh, of the prospering from the energy revolution program, and uh, and thirdly, we're going to give you the opportunity to to ask questions and engage with us on, on what we think is a, an, as a as I've said uh, an increasingly important topic as we uh, as we seek to move forward to uh, toward net zero. Uh, before that, I'll do some uh, some housekeeping. Uh, so if I could go to the next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to, to make you aware of a few things regarding the, uh, the webinar. Uh, all, all the participant microphones will be, will be muted during the course of the meeting. Uh, when you want to ask questions, and we'll certainly welcome, uh, welcome you doing that, uh, the, the, the agenda is organised for, uh, for Q&A sessions, uh, and we'd ask that you, uh, you use the, uh, the chat function to, uh, to, to ask your questions. Uh, we will do our best to answer as many of those as we can in the course of the in the course of the webinar. Uh, but those that we that we can't get to, then we'll uh, we'll answer them and share them after the uh, after the meeting. And I should also say that the uh, the meeting is being recorded, and uh, we'll be making that available too through the sort of usual digital digital platforms. So with with that, um, I'd like to to share with you the agenda for the afternoon. Uh, it's a very full agenda. Uh, and we acknowledge that uh, three hours is quite a long time, but uh, we would we would uh, we would counter that with the argument that it's uh, it's also a very very interesting subject. So we hope that you'll be able to stay with us for the uh, for the duration of the uh, of the of the of the entire webinar. Um, and uh, we um, we but we appreciate that there'll need to be a bit of time out. So we we've uh, we've scheduled a couple of breaks uh, in the in the course of the in the course of the uh, afternoon. Um, so it's we, we, we divided the, uh, the 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 agenda into uh, into three into three main sessions. Uh, in the first, we'll look at uh, some of the the matters that underpin um, SLES generally or smart local energy systems generally, and uh, help and share with you uh, some thoughts on the role that systems engineering can play in that. And particularly, we'll look at our aspects of integration and, and the uh, the way that that can uh, that way that that can contribute. And there'll be more about that later. Uh, in the second session, after we've had a break and some Q&A, uh, we'll focus on three particular areas that are of uh, significant relevance to the uh, to the world of SLES. And uh, then in the final session, we'll consider uh, we'll consider four further themes or or areas of uh, areas of focus that again uh, are uh, all in support of moving the, uh, the SLES agenda forward. And then finally, uh, we'll have some some wrap up and. Um, We'll, uh, we'll invite you to uh, to stay in touch with us on this subject because I think it's, or we certainly hope it's an area where we have a significant amount of, of shared interest. Uh, be before moving forward with the agenda, uh, in, in, uh, on, on slides particularly, I wanted to uh, just say a little bit about the Energy Systems Catapult uh, for those who may not be familiar with it. Uh, and on the next, uh, on this, uh, on this start, with, in, on this. Uh, Particular slide, we try to summarise just a few of the, of the highlights about the catapult. So you, you may be familiar with catapults generally, we're an, inter, uh, an innovation intervention from government, and we're charged with supporting and encouraging uh, innovation with the, obje the objective of, of uh, achieving um, uh, sustained economic growth for the for the UK. And in the energy systems catapult, we have a, a second important objective, which is very much focused on how do we how do we achieve a, a clean a clean future? How do we address the the questions of climate change, and, and how do we try to mitigate the the, the risks associated with uh, with that? Um, our work is uh, centered around a number of areas, which are which are indicated here. Uh, we we work across the sector 
uh, with uh, a variety of stakeholders drawn from uh, from academia, from industry, from government. And in all the things that we do, we, we seek to take a whole systems approach, which means we try to look at the, uh, at, the, at the problems we're trying to solve, the challenges we're trying to address in a very holistic way and, uh, and build solutions which uh, similarly respond to the, to the complexities uh, and uncertainties of those kinds of, uh, those kinds of, those kinds of problems. So you, uh, from, a, from, a, from, a, from an organizational point of view, we're based in, uh, we're based in Birmingham. We're a group of about 200 people. Uh, we've been operating since uh, about April of 2015. Uh, some of you we will have uh, been in touch with, but for those who haven't, uh, who haven't been in touch with this or who would like to be in touch with this, we would certainly very, very much welcome having the opportunity to, uh, to talk to you about our full program of, uh, full program of work. One of the things that we do uh, has been um, to work uh, with the Prospering from the Energy Revolution Challenge. We've been very pleased to have a, to have a role in that. Um, and uh, for those of you who may be familiar with it generally, uh, it's part of the, uh, the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund. It has a, a, a suite of uh, a portfolio of challenges which is identified, and one of them is addressing the, the, uh, the, 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 energy, the energy transformation that's being it's, it's required to get us to to net zero into a into a clean future. Um, this uh, the, the the prospering for the energy revolution, or PIFA as it's as it's called, uh, has uh, had an investment of government from something in excess of 100 million, and broadly that is to be spent on uh, with industry and research to to uh, to try and address the transition to the to the uh, to clean energy and to apply um, to, to to apply smart systems in in, in achieving that. Uh, the objectives uh, specifically around the the, the P for program are, are shown here, um, and, and broadly speaking, it's it's about how do you how do you discover ways to create focus and momentum for smart local energy systems. That's quite central to what the the P for program is about, and um, it does that through a number of uh, a number of areas, uh, including the some, some which are more technology oriented, others which are more business model and finance oriented. And uh, some which are, are are about the integration of solutions to achieve uh, to achieve good uh, good outcomes. Um, if we if we move forward and think specifically about what uh, what that means in terms of smart local energy systems or, or SLEZs, uh central to the people thinking is that they are fundamental to getting to uh, to net zero, or they will certainly play a, play a key role in doing so. And, uh, and and we would certainly, and in in the catapult and in the ARIS program, we would certainly uh, we would we would agree that they are they are uh, vital. However, we would also agree with the with the people thinking that this is not just about uh, getting to net zero greenhouse gas emissions. It's also about the the creation of economic and social benefits that surround that, because these these uh, these systems are going to be deployed in in local areas, and they're going to need to serve the serve the uh, the people that uh, the people that live in those in those local areas uh, if we if we think in, uh, a little bit further about the PIFA program and see what it's actually been been doing on and which is shown on the next slide uh, we we see that there's been a series of projects which have uh, come out of the uh, out of the program uh, there's um, the uh, there's the four demonstrators there are 10 uh, detailed design projects which are currently in in flight uh, the uh, concept design projects, the 11 concept design projects, which are uh, are now complete, and it's really there that we're going to focus some of our some of our interests today, because those are the projects which are are addressed in the report that I mentioned uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, in addition to that, there are other projects uh, being undertaken uh, which are designated as the key technology components. Uh, they were in the form of a, an, an innovation accelerator in, in, in its early in earlier days, but broadly they're focused on, on trying to deploy uh, innovation into into this environment. And an interesting uh, an interesting number from <clears throat> from my point of view, at least, is that across the the consortia that are actually delivering these projects, there's something in excess of 200 uh, organization, organizations that are involved, be they academic or industrial, or indeed from other types of research organizations. So it's actually including a huge community that's focused on uh, on 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 the uh, on both the challenges and opportunities of of how we get how we make SLEZIS, uh, how we how we address and achieve the, the promise of SLEZIS. There are two uh, there are two other groups uh, which are associated with the uh, with the project. Uh, one of them is so-called Energy Rev. Uh, Energy Rev is, a, is an academic consortium. It's led by the University of Strathclyde, 
and it uh, comprises 22 universities, and they're undertaking uh, research on the uh, on the uh, in the area of how you get sustained benefit from uh, from SLES. Uh, and then ARIS, uh, who's, which stands for the Energy Revolution Integration Services, uh, which is the organization that, uh, that I mentioned again previously, which sits in the catapult and it's really the focal point for, for, for much of our involvement uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in, in this PFAR activity. I just I'd make very passing uh, reference to the fact that there's there are other projects and programs and activities underway that you may have heard of. Uh, one of them being the Modern Energy Data Access Program, for example, a project which is being undertaken by Innovate UK. That's also in, in the orbit of, uh, of the uh, Prospering from the Energy Revolution uh, activity. So moving on just to say a few uh, a few words about ERIS. Uh, specifically, our, our role is to is to support PFER in, in addressing uh, the, the, the opportunities and challenges of, of, of SLEZs and how they will deliver the, the uh, economic climate and, and societal benefits that, uh, that, we all, that we all want to achieve. Um, and we do that or we will be doing that by focusing on, on broadly three, three objectives. Uh, the, the, the first is, is working with the projects and, and increasingly with the, uh, the sector more broadly to help identify and address barriers that may exist to, to moving forward with SLEZ. Uh, and to encourage um, to encourage their uh, to their uh, to try and overcome the barriers and then encourage their uptake and create momentum um, beyond the beyond the life of the uh, of the program. A second thing that we're focusing on is helping to measure whether SLES has actually achieved good energy outcomes. And then thirdly, we're 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 trying to understand how do we how do we help others. Um, um, understand uh, the, the, the potential benefits and value of SLES. How do we help them understand what, what a SLES might actually look like and what their, their role and value could be uh, going, going forward? Um, one thing I've studiously avoided doing thus far, um, and although I do have a, a slide, is to actually say um, on the next slide what, what, uh, what defines a SLES. And you'll see that it's quite blank. And I think what that responds to is the fact that, or what that seeks to say, is that um, there is a there is debate about what a what a smart local energy system actually is, uh, how you define it, uh, the words that are actually included each have um, each have meaning and are different different meanings for different people. Um, so what I, what I have tried to do, though, I've taken a bit of a risk, and on the next uh, on the next slide, I've I've made a I've made an attempt to. Um, to say some, uh, to say some, to make some comments at least about what, how you might frame what a, what a, what a, what a SLES is. And, and broadly, broadly speaking, at least in, in my view, and I'd be interested in, in perhaps in the, in the questions, you can, you can contradict this, but uh, broadly it, it brings together local and national infrastructure to create uh, an intelligent energy system. And uh, it, it's focused on, a, on, on serving the needs of a particular, a particular locality. Um, it also is, is charged with uh, responding to the local needs of, uh, of, of, that, uh, of that locality. So, and those needs are going to be measured in a number of different ways. Some of them relating to climate, economics, and, 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 uh, and, and social and, and their social and the social aspirations of, of those who, who live there. And, and it also obviously relates to, to the world of energy. So it's uh, addressing the full life cycle of energy, if you like, from making it, moving it, storing it through to its, uh, through to its use. But again, thinking about that in, in terms of a, uh, uh, of, of a, of a, at a local scale. But what I've discovered with this though, as soon as you say the word smart, you can have lo very long discussions about what smart means. When you say the word local, you can have um, very long discussions about what local means. And even when you say energy, you can have long discussions about what that means. So it's 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 quite a rich uh, a rich environment for for thinking through how do you bring these these concepts and ideas together to deliver uh, to deliver systems which are going to be of of uh, of, of genuine value and and deliver uh, make a sustained contribution to uh, to achieving net zero and uh, and associated objectives. But we what other what, what we we can also say about. Um, about SLES is that there's 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 sort of almost two directions of approach which we try to illustrate on the on the next uh, on the next slide, and that is you can you can think of them uh, of, in, in a sort of technology oriented way or in a business model way. But the truth is that uh, to, to achieve a successful to build a successful SLES and to achieve the, the right kinds of outcomes, you need to consider you need to consider these uh, these various dimensions um, holistically. 
Currently, all net zero scenarios have a large focus on significant improvements on energy efficiency across the whole energy sector. Are the uh, incentives in place now and those planned for the future enough to achieve such improvements in efficiency? Okay, um, I think we'll probably be touching on this sort of thing um, this afternoon, but I will ask uh, Sarah, who's uh, who will be speaking this afternoon, whether she wants to make some some early comments on that question. I, I think that it's safe to say that the potential of energy efficiency has not been fully tapped yet. Um, and in my uh, presentation later, I will be just uh, giving a broad brush overview of the key challenges um and um and the the policy landscape is, is at the moment it's very fast moving but just to say that um that many of the PIFA projects uh, uh, as part of the PIFA, uh, part of the project is to to make proposals on market design and policy regulatory frameworks that do fully unlock the benefits and um and so many of them are innovating in market design and policy um so that is interesting but um but yes i will you know come back to it later but but yeah that's my answer in a nutshell <laughs> 